Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here at Wonderfest 2023. I'm actually with one of the organizers here, David Gurton, aka Blappy. How are you doing, David? I'm doing good. So we finally got a chance to get you to talk about your work, even though you've been helping showcase all the hundreds of model makers here. Yep. Uh, and this model really caught our eye. It, this is like what you're known for, this, this color scheme, this golf livery. Yeah, yeah. Um, I. Uh... I decided to do this in this golf scheme because it's, you know, it's a very striking scheme, very iconic, right? So uh, these Machine and Krieger kits are usually done as a beat up tank and they got big guns and big cannons and stuff. And I have a love of auto racing and I build a lot of uh, race cars, right? Yeah. So I thought I would apply the gloss scheme to this. So I took most of the lumps and bumps off of this. I smoothed it down, took all the guns off wow. and uh, shined it up real nice. Yeah. Now you mentioned the original source of this design. It's a Machine and Krieger kit. Maybe yes. people don't know. Uh, the source of that, but it, can you describe the Machine Krieger universe? Um, yeah, so there in the 80s, there was Hobby Japan Magazine, and they had a thing called SF3D, and uh, Ko Yokoyama had written this whole bunch of stories and created all these models that go with the stories for Hobby Japan, and they were basically kit bashes, right? And he was taking all these uh, uh, Japanese kits, and all these aircraft kits, and squishing them together, and they ended up being mostly 120th scale because he was using none of the Tamiya, the little mm. pit crews and stuff like that, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so he'd put those in there, and um, I modify those, so we just called it 120th scale. And then later, um, uh, it sort of, uh, there was a lull in what was going on with that. I'm not sure what the whole story is there. And then it came back as Machine and Krieger again. And now they've been losing a bunch of new kits. The original kits were by Nito, and now Hasegawa and Wave are doing a lot of these kits now, and you're seeing a lot of stuff you never would have seen before. And, the, and they're very nice. Have a dirty, grungy, mechanized aesthetic with pilots who are in the suit in, in, in the cockpits yeah and the, the pilots are like using like vr headsets and yeah. this is like in the 80s he was doing this stuff so yeah. it, was, it was very very sci-fi oh my god we, we can do it at home now right but <laughs> i mean it was very sci-fi then yeah right so yeah. yeah he had that these were beat up like old beat up tanks and you know he was sort of following a little bit of the star wars aesthetic with some greeblies mm -hmm. and having you know them all smashed up and dirty and weathered and things like that yeah but i thought let's uh do something i've never seen before and let's yeah. make a racer my theory was if the war was over and these things are laying around in junkyards, somebody starts a racing league. Yeah. And so these guys are hauling these out of there. So guys are putting different color schemes, different liveries on them. So I went with the golf scheme because I thought it was pretty nice. I mean, it reminds me so much of like, you know, Canada's motorbike from Akira. Yeah. Right. Where you have all the branding and it's gloss yeah. red, but here you have, uh, you know, a different finish. And I want to talk about the finish. Then tell me about your affinity for this, this golf color scheme, this livery here. Well, um, <clears throat> I always loved auto racing, and I sort of wasn't paying too much attention to it for a while. And when the movie Ford vs. Ferrari came out, yeah. it sort of rekindled my love for auto racing. So I decided to, to do something like that. And the first kit I bought, I, so I saw that, and then I went and I watched Le Mans again. And it turned out I'd never seen Le Mans. I couldn't believe it, right? With, you know, Steve McQueen, right? So he was driving the 917K Porsche, and it was done on the Golf Liver. I thought, wow, that'd be really cool. So I bought the kit, I bought the paints. Uh, these are like aftermarket paints you can get, and they're color matched to the actual racing colors, like perfectly, right? And um, so I went out, and I got that kit, and I got the paints. And then um, I came across this in a box. I'd started it 10 years earlier. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll get rid of this or whatever. I'll give it to somebody. And then the thought struck me one night, why don't I do it in golf racing livery? So before I ever built an actual race car with the livery on it, I built this, right? Oh. So that's what I came up with. And I did a bunch of research on different race car liveries. So what I did was um, I found, I think it was a 20, early 2010s. It was a Porsche 911 race car. And it had this, it had this sweeping pattern down mm -hmm. the side of the car and up around the back. And I thought it would go really nice on the Falke with the lines on the Falke and I could have a point back here where it intersects. And you, know, you want to have the, the, the paint scheme go with the style of the vehicle, right? Yeah. So that's what I thought. And I put the racing stripe down here and I gave it, you know, the, the number that's canted at the top mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. So, and all these um, race vehicles, I'm, I've got this one and this one, and I've got a little tiny A-wing I had on one of these gun towers that GT did. Yes, setup, I saw that. That right? was you, so, of course. Those yeah. the same, same, so same color. It's got the other number 13 on them. They don't use 13 in racing anymore at all. It's like superstitious. Yeah. But this was my father's lucky number. It's become my lucky number because it was his, his birth date, mm, right? Mm, so this mm. is like a little bit of a memory to my father on yeah. all these race cars that I do custom yeah. with the number 13 on them, which I think is kind of fun. Well, and the thing that's also so striking is the, the gloss finish. And yep. walk me through how you got this kind of candy coated finish it really evokes you know a, a pristine a new you know, yeah. sports car well i'd wanted to build race cars for years and the finish had always kind of scared me right yeah. 
So um, during the pandemic, I had a lot of spare time, working at home a lot, not working at home a lot, right? Just kind of nothing to do. And I watched a ton of YouTube videos and I took all the, a bunch of different guys' ideas and I sort of mashed them in what I could do. Basically, that would be getting from point A to point B as fast as you can and still getting your results and the kind of tools I had available, right? So the local hobby shops have certain tools, certain paints and stuff. And I'd started using the new, to me, it has these LP series lacquers. Mm -hmm. So um, I had tried it on this little plane back here. Yep. And that's just gloss with no polishing, right? Okay. And I thought maybe next time I'll try polishing it. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's what happened with this one. So the polishing was basically laying on like maybe five or six layers of gloss. Okay. Leaving it overnight. You put all your decals on, you leave it overnight again. The next day you come in, you put another five or six coats so of clear on the top. Decals. So you, the decals are sandwiched and they're under a nice thick layer of clear, Yeah. right? And the last couple of coats are like really heavy, really wet coats. And it's very terrifying because you're like on the verge of the paint running, but not yeah. quite. And you gotta be really careful. So it's a little tricky. I luckily didn't get any runs on this one. No and build up, no, no, no build up, no nothing, nothing weird going on. And then I just basically took it and I put it in like a bin somewhere and I forgot about it for a week. Cause like that's you don't, what it takes. Yeah, yeah. You just want to leave it for a week, and what that happens is the paint fully cures, and when these lacquers cure, they do shrink a little bit too, mm. so it does gloss up a little bit. Um, but then it gets tough as nails, right? Yeah. So you can come in with polishing sponges. I use these God Hand polishing sponges that come out of Japan, right? And so I'll wet sand with like a four thousand to six thousand, then an eight thousand grit sanding sponge, <laughs> and then when I'm done with that, I'll use. Uh, to me, it has three grades of polishing compound. They okay. got a coarse, uh, yeah. a fine, and a medium, or a, a finishing one. It's basically so, sand. It's like you're sanding. It's, yeah, in so and it gets, has like really, 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 really fine stuff. I mean, there's other types of polishing compounds for like plastics. A company called Lois makes one. Yep, yep Lois. But yeah. um, the grit's not as fine in those, oh, right? Oh, you like and, the Tamiya's. Yeah, the Tamiya's finer. And the Tamiya is made to be used on paint, whereas the Novus is made to be used on plastic. Clear plastic. So, you're trying to make a, yeah, a dome or something. Yeah. yeah, so I don't think it works as good on the paints. Mm -hmm. At least I found in my experience, I have both. So, and then once the three levels of polishing are done, then you use it to me a model wax on here and it gives it that final pop. Wow. And then to give it, you know, to give it a better uh, look of detail and stuff, I did things like I did a very fine panel line wash and all the panel lines, right? And as I'm going to, and I'm building a model like this, I'll like get the model all built and cleaned up and then I'll uh, use some of those, like you can get little scribing saws from mm -hmm. Hasegawa and those guys. And I'll clean up all these panel lines and then um, I'll prime it and I'll clean up all the panel lines again and then when I put the paint on, I clean up all the panel lines. So every time I put paint on this, and a, 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 this isn't my technique. I got this from a friend in the local IPMS club, right? And so it keeps these panel lines super crisp. And then when everything was done and all the gloss was done, I gave it a wash. And this is an acrylic wash. I think it's a Vallejo acrylic wash on there. And um, it just makes all these panel lines kind of pop out and it really makes it look really nice. And a few little things I did, I've got little tiny photo etch rivets on here. I see that. Um, that came from, I forget the name of the company, I went to Japan again, and they make those little rivets and there's some around here and there's some around here and stuff. And then I had a, I actually had a mistake here where the paint got damaged, so I hit it under this foil. And this is that foil duct tape you can get for the oh, duct work in your house. aluminum tape, yeah, yeah. The aluminum tape. So I just cut rectangles of that and I stuck it on over the little, the oh, blemish really? I that's had. What it, that's just little That's tape? all it is, yeah. Oh, and then so I flush. used, um, you know, what's called the pounce wheel. Yes, making yes. like rivet detail yep. on aircraft. And I just carefully went around and I added all the little rivet lines to that. After it was already on here. After it was on, <laughs> yeah. And it just, it came up really nice. So it was a, a nice way to, um, you know, uh, solve a problem. You gotta yeah. be clever sometimes, right? And it catches light in a different way yeah. than the gloss. That's right. So it adds to the believability and realism. And some good. of the decals on here, um, like the golf decals, right? They came from a company called Spot Models out of Spain. They make a big sheet of just golf markings, right? And then some of these other ones came from, um, there's some here that came from Industria Mechanica, puts out some some and so there's some of theirs on there and a couple of these uh my friend jason eaton sold me a bag full of old f1 decals and stuff because he does the studio model stuff so he had he doesn't use the decals very often so i said can i buy all your decals so there's some very very vintage um uh, formula one decals on here as well that is so sweet and then the, the this uh this, the the kind of display that it's on the stand that it's on um uh, that's not part of the model. That's that is not part of the model, no. So, I mean, I can lift it off if you want me oh, to. Oh, yeah, sure, to sure. Take a look at it. So, I'll just yeah. set this over here, right? Oh. And so, when I made this, I turned this piece on the lay that worked, right? And the little disc under there, and then I resin cast three of these. I wanted these to fit the little, those little domes, hemispheres mm. in the bottom of here for mm -hmm. the anti grav units. So, it would fit those perfect. So, I made these and I cast them in resin. And then everything else is just um, 
it's um, Plastistruct, and then it's Greeblies. Oh, kit right. Bashed. So these are like it's right. kitbash. I totally kitbashed it. There's like wheels off of. Uh, I think somebody told me it's a Russian KV. I wouldn't know. I'm not an armor guy, right? There's gun barrels on the side. Um, this is the foot off the old ATST kit. Yeah, right. Yeah. That came well, it out. looks like a trailer that you would put on you know, yeah. some type of track or something. And yep. Because um, uh, uh, Yokoyama-san, when he designed this, he designed a trailer for it as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was a resin kit that somebody put out of that, but I just wanted to do my own thing and just have fun, right? And there's like a fuel tank off a transport truck of some kind, and I gave it a fire extinguisher because <laughs> you figured you have a fire extinguisher, plus it gives it a little flash of color, right? Yeah. Which kind of looks neat, yeah. right? So it gives it some visual interest because, I mean, part of this is art, right? So you want to create visual interest and just um, and really just have fun with it. David. Yeah, and that guy just plops right on there like wow. that. Wow. And then the base I just made, it's a sheet of styrene I painted. Yep. And I scribed it and dirtied it up and put some little oil stains and stuff and stuck it on a piece of MDF that I sprayed black. <laughs> but it gives it a whole gives it a whole look, right? It looks like it's at the racetrack ready to it go. It does, it does. Yeah. How long was this project start to finish? I know you said you'd worked on the interior oh. kit for a while. Yeah, so I started it like 10 years ago and then it kind of sat. So, I mean, I probably had maybe an hour or two into it to start with. And I probably put another 40 hours into it. And I would say maybe 10 hours of that was just polishing the paint. Yeah. Yeah. What, like, what's your recommendation for people who want to put gloss on their models, who want to give it that kind of shiny car finish? You know, I, I know you watch um, a lot of videos, but what, yeah. is, is it patience? Is it just... It is, it is patience. It's patience and it's buy the right tools. Like a lot of people will go and they'll buy to the, go to the hardware store and buy a Duplicolor or buy a rust or something mm -hmm. and put it on their models. Because it's, you can buy a giant can of that stuff for the same price as a small can of Tamiya spray or, you know, jars and stuff like that. But um, if you want to get, if, if it's very important to you, you want to get good finishes on your models, you got to buy the right tools and you got to buy the right supplies. Yeah. So buy model paints and like use an airbrush if you can and stuff like that. And it's an investment. Like I've got airbrushes that I've been using for 30 years, yeah. right? Yeah. And they still work like new. You change the seals occasionally and stuff like that, but um, they just work. They work great. And it can always be more glossy. Even when you think it's glossy it'll, enough, it always can. Like that, you can when always go polish it another pass. And well, then... Yeah, so when I, well, the first the first gloss finish I did, it was this, uh, it was this Ford race car, right? Yeah. And this was the 2016 or 2017 Le Mans winner when Ford came back and won Le Mans, right? So um, I built this car up and then I started to do the polishing. And every time I went through a step of polishing with the compounds, I thought, well, I could just stop there, couldn't I? I thought, well, I'll try the next level of compound. And every level of compound I go to, it gets shinier. Wow. The first time I did this, I, like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, it's still getting shinier. It's still getting shinier, right? And then you put the model wax on here, and it's incredible. And even for the clear cool. parts, because clear parts have little minor imperfections, mm -hmm. if you use that model wax on the clear parts, it just looks like glass. Like, it looks so nice and so scale smooth. And then on this one here, you do the little details too. Like I put a little antenna on this one, right? Like the real race car has. And it just gives it that little hint of realism that just is really, it's just beautiful. And the same with this. There's an antenna over here that I made and it's a piece of aluminum turned on the lathe. And I used some uh, little nickel metal tubing and I just stuck it in there. And it just, it's just, I just made it up, right? But I mean, this is science fiction, so the sky is the limit, right? Not the sky is not the limit, right? Because it's science fiction. Right? Is, is it hard to know when to stop the build? Um, it, it can be, um, you know, what's, there's a saying an artist had, I don't know if it was Da Vinci or somebody, yeah. nothing is ever finished, it's just abandoned, yeah. right? So- What um, is the deadline? What's that, or what is the deadline, yeah. And I mean, that's, so I knew where I wanted to get with this and I knew when I was there, right? And I thought, well, I think I'm done now. Like I could have, you know, even added way more detail to the engine if I wanted to and stuff, but at some point, there's a, a saying, and it's um, uh, perfect is the enemy of finished. Yep. Yeah. Right. So you just at some point you got to go. It's done, and put it on the shelf and be happy with it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, congratulations! It's such a beautiful model, and yeah. thank you for sharing some of your insights and your I'm experience happy to, yeah. with this build. Uh, it's, it's such a unique, not just like I don't see a lot of Krieger stuff here, but like no, it's that plus your take on it. Very distinct to, to, you know, everyone knows this is a floppy build. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So, you know, I've gone through a full jar of uh, the orange and the blue. Yeah. And I've got another full jar of the orange and the blue still. So All right. I've got a couple of projects in the works right now that are going to be in golf marking. So they'll be here next year. We'll have to be back yeah. and check yeah. in with you then. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. It's been great.